And before I start, I was asked to make an announcement because the district is close to making a decision about how to replace Anne. They've got two possibilities. If they want to try to find some semblance of organization, they're going to hire a co-principal to take over the duties. And if they decide it's impossible to replace her, which we all know it is, they're going with Proposition 2, which is to just say, the hell with it, bring back a net. When, when I was told I was going to speak today by uh, Marie and Debbie, I thought it was because at this point I have worked longer with Anne than anybody else in the district. But they said, no, 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 we're her friends, we just want you to make fun of her. <laughs> but it is true, I've worked with her longer than anyone. Well, not, not work with her, work for her. <laughs> Because everybody in this room has worked for her at some point. She's in charge, she's the boss, do what she says, and maybe you'll survive. <laughs> Which concerns me because now she's going to be taking care of a baby. <laughs> this poor child would have less regimentation if Alicia left it on the doorstep of the United States Marine Corps. She has already decided on the day the baby's going to walk and talk. But Anne has never been this control. She's never this controlling. She used to be sweet and innocent. And I remember that. So I thought I'd kind of try and explain how she went from sweet and innocent to Anne. She started her career at Robert Frost working for principals Dick McTeague and Dick Levesque. And working for a couple of dicks really prepared her. That's their names. And prepared her for taking charge and taking over. She knew if the school was going to run smoothly, she'd have to do it herself. And working for the two dicks really prepared her for the day that Jim Cummings would become principal. He was so young, Anne just called him the baby. <laughs> and he was so clueless, knew nothing about how to run a school. She had to do everything for him. And every time he called and made a mistake, and she had to fix it, she called it, I have to change another diaper. <laughs> Where's Julie? I'm sure Julie's quite, I'm very happy because I didn't mention her. <laughs> She's here? Yeah. Look, see, I didn't mention her. You happy? I didn't mention Julie because Julie was the one principal that actually took some of the burden off Anne's shoulder. <laughs> Until they banned smoking inside the school building. <laughs> then Julie spent most of her time outside the school building and Anne was back in charge. <laughs> and that leads us to Eliana, the principal that finally drove Anne out. Alright, I was told I only get five minutes, so I'm going to finish. I said I was going to tell the truth, and here's the final truth. There has never been anybody more indispensable to the success of Robert Frost than Anne. Yeah. Now I'm going to clap for that. We all know. So, I propose that we dump the Robert Frost name, that hack poet who never stepped foot on Long Island, and we change the name of the school to the Anne Connick Middle School. suggestion to our illustrious superintendent, and it met with a decent response. She said, and I quote, get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> she didn't say no, so there is hope, and if the district won't do it, I'm sure I can organize the boys, and we can go change the sign ourselves. So, Thank you very much, I'm sorry.